For better or worse, the Corolla Hybrid has reached a level of Toyota-ness that I no longer thought they could achieve. While that was a mild grammatical nightmare, this is a frugal dream. For 24 grand, you're getting a car that's fairly well equipped, easily hits 50 miles per gallon, and can do this while accommodating a small family or tall friends. While Toyota has not released pricing for 2024, I would expect a small bump there, as is tradition. And they did add the nightshade trim back, which now it's on the hybrid as well. It adds some cool dark accents and tough looking bronze wheels, though after driving the very sensible hybrid variant, that package really makes this the automotive equivalent to anchor arms. And unlike those fictional muscles, LE and XLE models have super thick sidewalls, which make them hard to puncture. Yes, this has just 16 inch wheels, others get 18s. In this sort of spec, I think the Corolla has an honest and unmistakably Toyota appearance. I absolutely love these LED headlights with the angular daytime running light here, and it also has LED taillights to match. Some may label this all as boring, but for its purpose, I'm a fan. Let me know what you guys think. If I were specking one of these out for myself, I think I would get the LE with the convenient package, which swaps that base specs steel wheels for alloys and adds Toyota's smart entry key, while still coming in at under 26 grand. The strongest virtue that kind of lingers throughout all aspects of the Corolla is its straightforward nature. On the interior, this means most things are controlled through analog buttons and dials. However, not very many of them. Compared to the Mazda 3, Honda Civic, Hyundai Elantra, and this feels like a public bus. While I think this is acceptable for a cheap car, most of its competitors are great for the money, leaving this in the dust when it comes to materials, build quality, and flair. This is for the person who's seeking a no-frills approach. I really do appreciate how little is going on here. And the new stripped down infotainment system reflects this as well. Every single one will get an eight inch screen. It has a good resolution, okay response time with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. Most are gonna have an analog gauge cluster too, though a seven inch digital cluster is available. And while the speaker systems also aren't standouts among the class, you at least have six speakers with tweeters or an 800 watt JBL sound system with a subwoofer that provides plenty of punch Maybe not the clarity of the Mazda 3 with the Bose setup, but I think Corolla buyers will like it. They'll also appreciate the very simple standard automatic climate control with just eight buttons and two dials to control it. There's also not a whole lot to complain about or praise when it comes to the seats. I'm six foot three. Thigh support is better in cars like the Mazda 3 or Hyundai Elantra, but I find this to have very agreeable back support and bolstering so that a wide variety of people could be comfortable. Though I do wish that they at least offered lumbar adjustment. I also wish that you didn't have to spring for the XLE trim in order to get Softex leatherette upholstery or heated seats. Interior storage on the Corolla sedan is acceptable. They do offer a wireless charger down here though it won't work if your phone has too big of a camera bump like mine. And moving into the back seat of the Corolla, considering how small this car is, this has an adequate amount of space. Both my knees and my head are sort of grazing, but so long as you're not regularly hauling around people in both rows that are over six feet, this should be enough. And if you want more room to stretch out, buy a Camry. Just also know that you're gonna pay like $5,000 more. You also do have USB-C ports, though just like most others in the class, this does not include rear console vents. The trunk of the Corolla is also competitive. It has a good amount of height, not crazy wide, a loud bird. And while not insanely wide, I think it's well shaped. So if you have to fit some bulky boxes, this could work. And with the seats folded down, this is no hatchback, but it should be sufficient for most people's usage. Unfortunately, hybrids do not have a spare tire, only a fix a flat kit. Just like professional golf on the road, the Corolla Hybrid is boring yet impressive. Under the hood, we're going to have a 1.8 liter naturally aspirated inline four. It's combined with a single drive motor and then a separate motor within the transmission. Net power is 138 ponies with 156 pound feet of torque and those numbers feel correct. <laughs> Yet it's still a master at work. So this is Toyota's now previous generation hybrid system. It uses a less powerful engine, less powerful motors, but the gas mileage is still very much on par with the new stuff. In fact, when I was very easy on it, I was getting 56 miles to the gallon in mixed driving. But does that mean this is horrendously slow? Let's find out.
This has a really respectable amount of mid-range grunt, and you'll start to feel that die out as you get into higher speeds, and at no point does it feel particularly spry, but the numbers it put down aren't as far behind the regular Corolla as I was thinking. Zero to 60 in 8.9 seconds is perfectly acceptable for a car like this that gets this sort of gas mileage. And I can't wait to see what this thing can do when Toyota finally throws in the next gen system. Pulling up to highway speed, this has acceptable power levels and acceptable noise levels. You're gonna hear the tires, the wind noise is present, and the engine grumbles when you ask for anything. If you want something more serene, I would highly recommend the Elantra Hybrid, though I still don't see Toyota stands jumping ship for the Hyundai anytime soon. For your everyday driving around town, the Corolla's eCVT does a great job of immediately getting you to whatever ratio is needed. But due to its middling power figures, acceleration is unimpressive, and it will feel a bit labored when passing or merging. Thankfully, the electric assistance gives it sufficient mid-range pep, and the short response time keeps it from falling flat on its face. Well, mechanically, this transmission has nothing to do with your regular CVTs. You actually can get a hybrid Corolla with all-wheel drive, just like most other Toyota hybrids, it just adds another motor around back. It's a 40 horsepower unit and it should be great for snow. And I would highly recommend getting that if you live in an area with regular inclement weather. I'd also recommend the quicker and more versatile Corolla Cross Hybrid if your budget can stretch substantially. Now that seems to be much harder to find, but if you can manage to get one, I've also gotten great gas mileage out of that, and you may want to consider it. Though I think this takes the edge when the road gets twisty. Now on a despicable back road, this is comfortable. Small to medium sized brakes in the pavement are hardly transmitting themselves through the cabin, and even though the larger potholes are easily perceivable, they're never harsh, so this has good enough ride quality to where I would recommend it to the citizens of Michigan or Indiana. Through corners, it's a lot better to drive than the Corolla Cross, I will give it that. This has a little bit more weight to the steering, it's still on the light side. It's numb, yet direct. Body roll is also present, but far from overbearing. I wouldn't call it entertaining, but it's a well-handling little car. Around some rough corners, this comes off pretty controlled. You can get a sport tuned suspension with the SE, it'll firm it up a little bit without putting much of a hamper on the comfort. Though without driving the two back to back, I don't feel like this is lacking. It feels confident, and unlike the regular Corolla sedan, all hybrids have independent rear suspension. Hitting the brakes, we have a natural feeling. The pedal is very easy to modulate and not too firm. Since it's electrified, it combines regenerative braking in the pedal to help juice up the battery. If you want more engine and motor braking, you can select the B mode on the shifter. And seeing out of this is also better than my own Corolla hatchback, mainly because the belt line stays very low. You have pretty large rear window for a sedan, though it's still very much on par with the class average. And the same goes for safety. After the updated crash test, it lost its perfect score, though it's still good. And with the new Safety Sense 3.0, it's even more dialed in. And chances are, if you're remotely interested in Corollas, you also hold dependability as a high priority. And the new model does not appear to disappoint. After the redesign in 2019, there were a few recalls and fixed issues related to doors trapping water, infotainment and active safety bugs, along with some reports of airbag problems. There are some miscellaneous issues reported on car complaints and cars.com, but considering how many are sold each year, this is phenomenal and Consumer Reports seems to agree. Whether we look at this generation of Toyota Corolla or we look at the history of Toyota hybrids, this should be a very long-lasting car. These kinds of batteries typically last around 12 years, maybe 15, depending on how you take care of it. Toyota offers a 10 year, 150,000 mile warranty. Though keep in mind, mileage is much less of a factor than age. And while battery replacement costs have gone down, when I talked to a Toyota dealership last, they said it costs around $3,000 to replace. But if that's the only big repair that this car needs over the course of 20 to 25 years, and it's getting over 50 miles to the gallon most of that time, I would easily consider that as worth it, especially if you're buying it new, because chances are you're not gonna keep it until you replace the battery. But it does bring up one concern of mine, and and uh, 
It's that the Prius exists. Now granted, this is cheaper than the Prius, but they offer similar levels of practicality. In fact, the Prius is a hatchback, so it's gonna be more versatile to a degree. I haven't driven one, but given the higher price, it's likely more quiet. It also comes with a lot more power and a similar level of efficiency with more swagger, which I guess is subjective, but those are all notable. And for me, I think I would end up leaning toward that car. I think the Corolla Hybrid's biggest edge comes down to how true it remains to Toyota's original mission with both the Corolla and the Prius. It's a car that combines maximum efficiency with a low entry price, great comfort, and longevity that rivals a crusty chihuahua with a bad temper. It's exactly what Toyota used to be known for, though it also handles better and comes with more advanced features than Corollas or Priuses of yesteryear. If you've been complaining about new cars growing to be superfluous and overpriced, the Corolla Hybrid is here to comfort you. Just accept that most other new vehicles offer more flavor and and punch, including the Prius. I'd like to end it there, but because Toyota can't slash won't build an excess of these affordable hybrids, they are hard to come by, and depending on your region, they could carry a markup, which leaves an unfortunate stain on an otherwise stellar value proposition. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like to help me conquer the elusive YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more fun, detailed car content without fluff. Follow my Patreon for an additional podcast, and I'll catch you in the next one.